what? We are back in Bulgaria. Surprise, surprise. This is like the fifth episode we've recorded from here. Try is uh, taking a much needed vacation in North Carolina after playing his first Myrtle Beach Open with A Rob. We did uh, a little partner swap. He picked me up uh, and played with A Rob for this one. And I'm here with my absolute boy on the road, Jake McNeil. Yes, guy. How are we doing, brother? We're back, baby. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town, and we have been in town for a long time. <laughs> Seems like we never leave this town. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we first got to Bulgaria. I think uh, I beat you here because me and Adam came out early for the first tournament in like mid-May. Yeah, that's that sounds about and, right. And then so we were here for a week. We went to Sochi. Is that when you intended to leave but couldn't, or did you you stayed because you were playing the national tour yeah. the next week? No, so we played we played you guys in the first event. Yeah, right in Sofia, and then we played that weekend, and then we were meant to go back to Florida where we were training with LT and uh, Andy Benash and a couple of the other yeah. Florida boys, and then we were gonna play the New Orleans AVP Gold. Get my boy Willie some some AVP points because yeah. he's trying to, to break in because he's got the U.S. passport. So that was the plan until I got to Germany and they were like, yeah, dude, you routed your flight through Germany. You're an idiot, basically. <laughs> They're like, people from Germany can't come to U.S. right now. Yeah. So Will, with the U.S. passport, just flashes it. He goes on through. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm on the, I'm on the phone with Onur going... Hey, my guy, can you come pick me up from the airport again? I'm coming back. <laughs> so Willie and I had a, had a week apart. And um, yeah, and then you guys kind of came back and Will came back and joined yeah. me for the national tour. And yeah, that was, but that was, that was a while ago now. So. Yeah. So, I mean, we were here for the first Sophia and then we had, you had the week off. You were here by yourself for a week while Will was in that, that's, Florida. That's right. Me and Adam were in Sochi. And then we met back up with you, played the national tour and then there was another Bulgaria event right after. So that's, that's right. That was four straight weeks. That's right. In yeah. Bulgaria. Yeah. And then we went our separate ways. Did you go home? I, you went back to Canada? I, I did. I went back to Canada for, I think, somewhere from 10 to 12 days, maybe something like that, but okay. possibly a little longer. And yeah. then I actually went and uh, had an amazing experience in uh, Tokyo. That's right. You went yeah. to the Olympics. I did, yeah. So I went, I got to go down there and. Uh, kind of be training partners for the four amazing Canadian women that yeah. went and played. So that's uh, Brandy Wilkerson and uh, Heather Bainsley and then Sarah Pavin and uh, Melissa Humana Paredes. <laughs> um, I'm sure I'll get shit for botching that, but it's all, it's all good. Um, yeah, and it was an absolutely incredible experience. Yeah. Um, we were we were there training both teams obviously on their off days supporting them kind of in any way that they needed. Um, got to work with Adam a lot, which is Sarah's uh, husband, and he was amazing, brilliant volleyball mind. The things that guy can do, both as a coach and as an analytic, is just insane. So I learned a ton from him. Just being in the atmosphere and watching the teams train all the yeah. time like was something incredible. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Just the learning experience of like how much de like attention to detail and and what they kind of just what they spend their time focus on focus sorry eh, focusing <laughs> on um, was awesome because it's it was slightly different than kind of what our everyday training yeah. environment looked like and I think just being around that greatness just kind of is inspiring yeah so I mean you were there helping. Two women's teams. That's right, yeah. How did they bring you and uh, Yvonne Reka, two guys, in to help with the women's team? I'm curious just like how that how that went. Yeah, so I, I wasn't in the behind the scenes yeah. of uh, who was chosen and what was right. what happened. I just know that the girls were given the choice and they kind of, you know, thought that Ivan and I would be a pretty good asset and be good women. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean to be honest with you, I, I don't know the yeah. exact like reason why we were chosen, but I know that you know Volleyball Canada obviously has a strong strong belief in us, and, yeah. and that we do a good job for them, and we kind of take in the experience. So I was super super grateful, and I got to do quite a bit of scouting actually for Mal and Sarah as well, which was yeah. really cool. And then we also got to watch a lot of the men's games, which was yeah. like 
another level of cool, especially when they're playing a private show for pretty much just you because there's no other fans <laughs> no in the stands. So yeah. that was an interesting. The whole three weeks was uh, definitely a roller coaster. It's a pretty. That's an awesome experience. Like, do you, obviously it was a lot. Like, because I'm sure that you were just like sort of stuck in your hotel. Is either you were training or in the hotel or watching volleyball or in the hotel. Yeah. So it was. I mean. I was putting in some pretty solid hours between both practices and then yeah. doing film for uh, my old Sarah. So I was I was watching a lot of film and, and just trying to help out Adam in any way. And kind of we would watch and try and emulate the girls best we could and, and, you know, try and see if they had any weaknesses and whatever. But we, yeah, like you said, it was kind of our room or the venue. So we just yeah. chose the venue a lot. We pretty <laughs> much was just at the venue all, yeah. all day just watching every single match we could because we were either like – Watching the women's match with kind of intent to like help our, our women's team, or we were watching a men's match going, This is what we aspire to be, and this is what we can we can learn from these players who are clearly better than us. So, right. Yeah. Whenever I see like go up and watch like volleyball at the highest level, there's like two reactions there. It's like I can't I'm not there yet. But it's inspiring because it's like now you're seeing exactly the tools that you need to acquire to get there. Did that change how, like how you approach the rest of the season? Because that was like not your midpoint, maybe like your seventy to seventy five percent of your season was finished. Did that change how you approach the rest of it, or were you like, I can't implement, I don't have enough time to implement these things yet, but this might alter the way I approach November through March. I would say more the second thing that yeah. you said. Just because I got home from Tokyo and we spent about eight days home and then it was five <laughs> tournaments in a row. Yeah. So we didn't really get the time to be like, okay, these are the changes I want to make to my game. This is the changes I want to make to my daily training environment right. or how we train or what we train kind of. So I think that stuff will come in the off season. Yeah. Um, I think it was more seeing everything and, and, and setting it up. Definitely helped, but it, again, it, I don't think we were able to really implement it yet. I think that this off season will be a really good time to be able to really look at the stuff, look at the notes I took from there, look at the things that I can take away from that, and then try and implement those in the off season, basically. Yeah. So I know in, in Rio, uh, Brandy and I think Mel, Mel that's were right. the alternates. That's right. Uh, and when we had Brandy on the podcast, she mentioned she was like, I didn't stay in the village. I didn't do anything that the athletes did because I wanted to, to get there myself. And she kind of used that as this like huge, like sort of inspirational, motivational moment, whatever you want to call it. Did that have like, did seeing the Olympics up close, was that sort of an eye opener for you at all? Like this could, this is where I want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. agree. It was super inspiring. I mean, we couldn't even get in the athletes village, so that wasn't a problem <laughs> for me. Uh, uh, with COVID and everything, it was a fun enough time. So, but totally, I totally agree with her. I think that it was just like so inspiring to see that it was possible and that we could do it and that these were the stepping stones to do it. And I think it just showed though how much commitment and how much work those people actually put into their everyday lives, basically. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, I mean, you're doing the work that's required to be an Olympian in terms of travel and stuff. Like, this year's been insane for you. It, has this been the busiest, like, travel year you've ever had? Because, I mean, right now you're on week, like, eight. Yeah. So, I think this is probably the craziest year, just in general. I think yeah. kind of fair for everybody kind of has that <laughs> reaction. But yeah. We had this thing where, you know, especially some of these countries were able to at least keep playing. Like you guys, I know it wasn't a lot, but you got some AVPs in. Yeah. The, like, Euros were kind of traveling around, doing yeah. training camps with each other and stuff. When we had that terrible year with COVID where kind of the main, like, thing hit, yeah. it was totally nothing. We had yeah. no tournaments. Like, the biggest tournament we were playing were just these kind of little... Quebec tournaments where I was right. actually just playing with Ivan, where we we're just kind of having <laughs> having fun more yeah. than anything. So we hadn't seriously competed in so long that it was kind of like, okay. And then not knowing the schedule at all and not knowing how many events or what kind of events. And yeah. then there being no two or three stars. And because we generally like to play two or three events, decompress, right. train, look at the video, look at what we could do better, yeah. look at this and 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 and. And then you know, implement those things and then try and go again. Right. 
Whereas this year we were like, we don't know how many tournaments there's going to be. Let's just yeah. pound them. But I think we had a different kind of experience this year because we, I mean, we didn't get the success we absolutely wanted, but we did find quite a lot of success and quite a lot of good wins. Right. So we ended up playing a lot of matches, which was kind of new for us as well. You know, yeah. it wasn't like go to a four star, try and battle the quality. Right. Like we were main draw, main draw, main draw. You know, every time we were in a qualifier, we were lucky enough to actually qualify this season. Which so is impressive. Because those are those are no joke. Those are battle. No. So, uh, sorry. Other than our Mexico four star at the very start of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, we were we were undefeated in the qualifiers. So we were just playing a lot of matches, which was right. different than kind of in past years where it would be like, yeah, we we'd bust and qualify for a three star, but then you know we wouldn't qualify for a couple. So yeah. I think we really learned like what it's like. And I think that's something that is good for the one star system in general, like whatever they change it to is like yeah. getting the, as young players, getting to actually play a lot of matches on the road, you learn so much, right? Yeah. You learn, you know, where's our ceiling, where's our floor and how can we make that smaller? And that's yeah. kind of what we're still trying to figure out. And I think that's what kind of all young teams are trying to figure out is like, how can we close our floor and ceiling right? right like keep our ceiling super high but bring yeah. the floor up because i think that's kind of the main difference between the top the top top teams and your kind of one star two star three stars is those guys can can play a match and beat anyone in the world right right but it, it's like <laughs> can you play two can you play four right. can you play five matches and i think that's when you play more on the world tour you feel start to feel more comfortable and, and all those things start to come kind of so yeah it, uh, Katie Spieler has a quote that I love. She said, keep your highs high and your lows high. Which is basically like the difference, like four star, like the Anders, Christians, Krasilnikov, Stoyanovsky's like their highs are high and their lows are pretty dang close to that high. Whereas you look at like, I think the running joke that we had in uh, Nijmegen in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. where basically you watch any team for 10 to 15 points and you're like, damn, like this team can really put it together. You watch that same team Five minutes later, and you're like, this team couldn't win a CBVA. Right. And it's crazy because, like, the one-star team, it's just so streaky. Just so volatile. You know, and you, like, see these moments of, like, absolute brilliance and the moments where you're like, what is happening? And, like, guilty as charged for all of that above. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and it's, it's crazy to, like, try to develop and sustain that consistency on the road when you go to Poland to... Hungary to Italy to wherever, yep. um, the Netherlands, and you try to like sustain that. It's it's hard. So I think that's the biggest like skill to learn is how to stay sharp on the road. Right. How you're away from your house. You're away from your normal gym. You're away from. You know, maybe Europe's not too bad, but sometimes regular food. Like, right. there's a lot of uh, factors, but yeah. it doesn't seem to matter for these top teams, right? Like, you look at Mole, and they're like, yeah, we didn't play that well. It's like, well, you won 21-16, 21-17, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if that's you not playing well, like, yeah. I'd, I'd love to be there, kind right. of, right? So I think that's kind of, like you said, anything that the one-stars teams can look to strive to, it's, it's that, for sure. Yeah. Did you and Will have, like, any... Uh goals that you were trying to hit coming into the season? Because I feel like it was, you know, from my perspective, it was hard to set goals because you mentioned the schedule came out and me and Adam were just like, well, let's sign up for everything, expecting for half of them to get canceled. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But then nothing got canceled and we were like, we're just, we're, we're playing, just playing, we're playing, we're playing, we're playing, yeah, we're playing, we were... we're playing. I was like, oh my God, like I can't walk up the stairs. Yeah, <laughs> we were in on that as well. Uh, I think it's imp it was important it's important to have those goals. We, we generally try and have a big goal, a giant yeah. goal, you know. So for us, you know, when it turned Paris 2024 yeah. is our kind of main goal. Or it could be even Pan Am Games, yeah. whatever it is. You know, and we're always kind of striving towards that. But this year was a little different because, you know, it wasn't realistic. It wasn't possible to really make Tokyo anymore. Yeah. Um, so our big goal was to break through a fifth. So we wanted to get, you know, into a semifinal yeah. of a tournament. Uh, unfortunately, we were stopped short. We got three fifths. Um, oh. And we got a 16-14 in the third in one of those fifths. Oh, where was that? That was here. Okay. Um, and then the two other ones weren't that, weren't that close. But, um, yeah, so that was kind of our, our main goal. We, we didn't necessarily achieve that. 
Um, but we, we had a lot of growing steps along the way. And, I mean, three-fifths is still a pretty solid season. Yeah. Uh, especially with the difficulty of these one-stars. I mean, yeah. you and I talked about this a lot off-air that – these, some of these one stars were three and a half. Yeah. Right. You had guys that have been playing four star main draws, popping into these tournaments and and doing some damage. So, I mean, there's no excuses. We set a goal. We want to hit it. But yeah. I think that, and looking back at it now, now that our kind of well, we'll see what happens with Brazil. But now that we're kind of starting to wind down, looking back, like it would have been like we obviously still wanted to reach our goal, but we're still proud of our season. Yeah. yeah. And so we have, it's a, it depends coming up, you know, we're kind of planning on playing, maybe, maybe not just signing up, seeing what everything looks like. Yeah. Well, we're going to, we're going to, once this whole situation in Bulgaria is racked <laughs> up, then we'll kind of sit down and we'll, we'll really think about it and we'll think yeah. about the pros and the cons and you know, what the list looks like, what it doesn't look like. And then. Yeah what the travel schedule will be. I mean, we have our national team tryouts. We have to do that every single year, and that's the weekend after. Okay. So that's a factor. Um, so there's just kind of a lot of things that are up in the air currently. Yeah. So we'll kind of see what we want to do when it when time comes around. Yeah. How do tryouts work? What do they, what do, they do? <laughs> yeah, uh, so you... <laughs> I'm very curious what that looks like. So you have... Uh, the first day is physical testing. Okay. So there's all kinds of different jumping, sprinting, yeah. reactionary timing... You know that kind of that kind of fun stuff. Uh, then the next two days is Saturday is kind of half, half the day is just ball skills, just kind of coaches watching you yeah. perform, passing, setting, serving. Then you kind of play uh, in the second half, usually with your partner. If you don't have a partner, you kind of just are floating around. And then the next day, they intentionally split you up from your partner. Everybody's kind of playing with people that you know yeah. that they see. They try and match you up, blocker, defender. Yeah. Try and keep you on your side, but they also kind of want to see how you react. Yeah, how good you can play without your partner. Um, so that's actually one of my personal favorite days of the year, just because it's a you know a giant king of the court. Yeah, for with everybody full fully engaged, fully right. passionate, because there's still stuff on the line. Right. Um. So it's it is kind of a fun day. I mean, it's yeah. stressful, of course. You never know what they're thinking, and then yeah. they kind of after that they sit down, they look at your past international results, they look at. You know, how you've been tracking through the years. They look at your physical testing, how you played at the tryouts, how you played locally. Yeah. What they think your potential is. And they kind of put together this score and we end up with a full-blown okay. ranking system. On, uh, and that's how we decide our national team. Interesting. So, well, like, does Canada, like, suggest partners? Do they try to, like, sway people to play with other people? No, they, they, they've been... Uh, They've been pretty good about, you know, they're like, this is your, it's your journey. You know, this is your, you know, they're, they're giving us a decent amount, but you're still flying. We have to pay for our own flights. We have to pay right. for our own travel. We have to, we're still putting our own, own stake in the game for real. Yeah. So I think the system where, you know, it's, Hey, we tell you where your partner, who your partner is, who you're going to play with really only works if you're funding the whole shot. Right. right. In my opinion, um, because you're going to tell me I have to go play with this guy and spend my own money. It just right. like doesn't really Makes go sense. over that well. Yeah. Um, when, when it's like you have to go play with this guy because I'm paying for it, then it becomes a bit then of a different a, conversation. Okay. Right. Got so, it. Cause then it's more of like you're their employee. But of course the coaches are, are always looking at, you know what, Hey, can, would this, would this team work? Would that team work? And kind of everyone's always looking for yeah. that. Right. So, right. Yeah. So then like, What's the goal of tryouts? Like, what is Canada trying to accomplish? Um, so, are they like trying to find like new guys? Do they like rank you? They like, rank you. They okay. rank you. But it's to decide who gets our cards for the year. Okay, so who so, gets like different funding? Right. Tiers? So, se well, senior you can only get through FIVB results. Got it. So, anybody that's at the tryout, you don't have to be at the tryout if you're a senior. Okay. Anybody at the tryout is looking for the you know eight to twelve. You know, it changes every year. Yeah. Uh, next gen cards, okay. which is you know a stipend per month and full time training, full time yeah. weights, full time everything in the system. There are some guys that are still hanging around that are on like independent, where they yeah. don't necessarily pay for anything, but they don't get any money from the government as well. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So interesting. It's yeah. Just, it's just, funny to see like we kind of talked about this earlier how like all the federations operate so different. Yeah. Like, USA is. 
is so hands off. Right. It's just straight up. It's a stipend tier system based on how you do on the FIVB. Occasionally, they'll pluck like a pretty talented prospect, mm-hmm. um, like a James Shaw or a Chrissy Jones or like a Carly Wellpat or you know currently Taylor Sander. Mm-hmm. And they'll say you have no points, but you're going. It's inevitable that you will get them. Right. Let's help expedite this process. But aside from that, it's just straight up like based on merit. Like you have X amount of points. You're our fourth ranked team. You get this amount of funding. You're allowed in the gym. You get some coaching, and then Brazil. It seems like they sort of handpicked their teams because mm-hmm. it's more of like we are funding your way. You guys mm-hmm. have tryouts. Like everything's so different. It's, it seems, yeah, it's different. And and you know, I mean, there's been success in all models. So I think it's just interesting to see all the different models. And you know, I think if one was really, really, really dominating, then you'd be like, well, maybe we're doing it wrong, you know. Right. But I think you're seeing success from a lot of different countries, a lot of different ways. So Yeah. Yeah. When you and Will sat down to map out this year, did you imagine it going anything like this? Spending, this is now like our seventh week in Bulgaria. You were uh, playing the part of a woman for three weeks in the Olympic Games, which yeah. is pretty damn awesome. And now you're filming a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the things we get into, man. The things we get into. <laughs> I, I no to answer your question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was it was a strange one altogether. I mean, any time you're trying to plan a beach volleyball season, it's, it's a strange <laughs> yeah. one. The people that you meet and the stories that you make and the lifelong friends that I have all over the world is insane to me, though. Yeah, I mean, everywhere I go, I I feel like I just meet somebody that's like. Wow, you have the most amazing story, and yeah. you're just the sweetest, like the sweetest dude I've ever met. You know, yeah. you're just so kind, or so funny, or you know, just mesh personalities. I mean, we just met yeah. this season, In right? May, like, and it's like boom, instantly, instant, solid connection. You know, so I think just like those things alone are just worth it for me. It just makes the journey worth it. Um, but yeah, the the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, talk about right place, right time, I guess. You're, no kidding. You're in Bulgaria, and all of a sudden we're sitting down with A-Rob and yourself, and A-Rob's like, hey, I'd like you to meet the biggest shooter you've ever met in your life. <laughs> the owner of a, <laughs> owner and, is he CEO? Uh, Yurif? Yeah. Yeah, he's the yeah. CEO of, the, of New Boyana Film Studios. One of the largest One of the, ones in the Europe. The largest grossing the, film studio in Europe. So <laughs> I'm like... Oh, yeah, you have, of course you just were like, yeah, you know, I'm only getting out to like three Laker games a day, so a year, sorry, so <laughs> yeah. I, I might as well sell those courtside tickets, <laughs> yeah. I guess, and I'm like looking at how much one courtside ticket to a Lakers game is, and yeah. I'm vomiting all over myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then just like hit it off, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, we need just uh, you three guys to fill in for the teaser that we're right. running for this for this incredible film yeah can you do that and yeah i mean i'm in bulgaria I, right. i'm at my day off sure <laughs> i'll come why wouldn't i come down to the courts and bat the ball around right. a little little did i know you know we got a camera that's worth four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> and it's like hit the ball beside this camera but over the camera but don't hit the camera <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and I'm just getting this amazing directions and all of a sudden I'm, you know, hitting some lines and yeah. having just an absolute blast, just getting into character. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I guess the trailer went or the teaser went pretty well because yeah. we're, we're back here shooting the movie. So <laughs> going to pause for a quick word from our sponsors and you know it. Our number one sponsor is Wilson Volleyball, maker of the absolute best volleyballs in the game of beach volleyball. And I know, I know the ABP season is over. It was just a quick blip, bam, then it's gone. But off season's here, and that means that training season is here. And you know you need some fresh Wilsons to make the improvements you need over the off season, or just to get together with a bunch of friends and play some volleyball. And to play some volleyball with a bunch of friends, you need Wilson Volleyballs, all right? So use our discount code SANDCAST-20 to get 20% off all Wilson products, 
All right, that is Sandcast-20 to get 20% off. So head over to wilsonvolleyball.com for your order today. And now, back to the show. It's amazing. And that's like one of my favorite parts about this whole like beach volleyball journey. Like so many people ask like why you do it because obviously it's not like the most financially sound decision. Um, but like you just travel and meet all these people and like you inevitably will just end up in the right place at the right time. And it just so happens that it, the more you travel and the more places, the more doors you knock on, like they open up mm -hmm. and suddenly you're sitting down with your reef and you're meeting Jake McNeil and then you guys are traveling. Like half the reason that me and Adam ended, like I was like, yeah, I'll go to Italy and the Netherlands. Cause like I knew that it'd be so fun just to like hang out with you guys. And, and then I remember walking to uh, lunch in Italy with you and Will and you were just like, yeah, yeah, this was in uh, Montpellier in France. And this was in New Zealand. And, Remember that time we like saw those kangaroos in Australia? I was like, do you understand how ridiculous your life is, Jake? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, that, I mean, talk about not maybe the most financially fulfilling, but, you know, just the experiences alone is, yeah. is, so, is so fulfilling to me and it's just incredible. And just meeting people instantly with the same passion that you have just sparks these unbelievable things. So, yeah. And so, What's like obviously you don't know like you and Will are gonna like feel out it to Pema, but the Canadian Federation is might get turned upside down. I mean, because Pedlo is he retired? Maybe we don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It it seems like you know they're. I think it's pretty safe to say that Tractor and Pedlo are are not playing together yeah. anymore. Um, Saxon and O'Gorman. Nobody really knows. They're kind of playing the, the, co the cards close to the chest. I mean, they're signed up for Brazil together, but yeah. who knows? And then, yeah, I think it's kind of like anywhere. You just kind of wait to see what happens with the big dogs, and then you kind of fill in the blanks fr from there, right? We're just kind of seeing. I mean, we got to get some men's teams back into the, into the top, into the conversation. Um, our guys played amazing, but no, no teams in the Olympics is, is tough for sure. I know that we'll... That'll be a big focus, I guess, from the national team. Getting yeah. we have two amazing women's teams that both got fifth at the Olympics, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, but I know that not having a men's team, you know, that's in the Olympics, that stings. That's what you pride yourself on. That's the biggest exposure of the year for beach volleyball. That's when yeah. all the eyes are on the TV watching. So I think that's the kind of that's that's my goal is to you know I want to be in that next one in 2028 like I want to be there so that's kind of where where we're at and and whatever I got to do this off season to get there that's kind of what I'll do yeah I feel like every federation is getting shaken up pretty big I mean Brazil they've already like totally <laughs> reworked itself Alisson's playing with uh, or Alvaro's playing with Evandro mm -hmm. and Alisson grabbed Guto, Guto mm -hmm. which is insane and then you see like world tour finals I feel like everyone's just like playing their this is like their their swan song there's there's see like, you later talks he was like and this is the last tournament for plavin's talks after getting and fourth then, at the olympics yeah, yeah and then the u.s like obviously jake gibbs finished uh phil dahlhauser's finished so we don't know like what does nick do uh where does taylor crab go i know chase wants to make paris um casey want, doesn't want anything to do with the fivb anymore so chase is now kind of a floater. Do Try and Trev stay together? Does Taylor try to pick up Try? Where does Taylor Sander fit in the mix? Like, what do April and Alex do? Like, every federation is going to have this, like, Olympic blow-up. Yeah, I think that that's kind of the re the reality of our sport just because it is such a big travel time. It yeah. is such a big commitment and, and the training alone and, and the everyday grind is, is real. And when you're in it and you're loving it, I mean, it's such a privilege. And then, you know, it gets to a point where, of course, you're – Looking to, you know, support a family, start, right. a, start a new life, start a new chapter, whatever that might mean. So I think inevitably the Olympics is kind of the big separator, especially for yeah. those top teams, right? After the Olympics, it's like, are we doing this again? Are we going to make another three-year push, four-year push? Or are we going to call it? And I think that's kind of why after every single Olympics, you always see massive switches, which is always an exciting time for right. beach volleyball just because you get to see new, new shiny toys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. And so what, uh, what's missing in your game? We're not necessarily missing, but what do you think 
are the either the physical, mental, tangible, intangible skills that you want to see most improve in your game that could help you make that jump? Yeah, that's a good that's a good I'm really excited to put a full off season in on in the weight room. Yeah. Super heavy. Get exactly where I want to be there. Not necessarily, you know, getting jacked in any way, but getting, you know Functional. Functional. Quicker, <laughs> yeah. faster. Getting rid of these niggly pains, you know, with my shoulder and things of that nature, really getting healthy again and just being in the best shape that I've ever been in my life. And then just that consistency piece, really starting to piece that together where it's, you know, it's, and I think that just starts with every day coming into practice, having a solid focus, focusing on the 80% of the game that kind of happens all the time, you know? Yeah not getting too bogged down on that one crazy play that, you know, is more out of athleticism and instinct right. and really getting down on that. Hey, my pass is here every single time, no matter what kind of serve my set is here every single time, no matter what kind of serve. Um, because I, I, you know, and then establishing my, like being able to, serve really aggressively consistently i think those yeah. are kind of some things that i'm most excited to work on this off season is just cleaning up those plays where it's you know it, we're not having those plays where we're just giving away free points because you just don't see the top teams in the world doing that right i feel like you're in a, like such an exciting position because like the way i look at the canadian federation is that like you're the clear-cut at least like number three defender i mean you have ben and grant or not Ben and Grant, you have Grant and Sam Schachter, who were like the top two big dogs. And I think you and Grant are pretty close. Oh, that's um, a big that's a big compliment. <laughs> I mean, Grant's a, a pretty dang good player. Yeah. Um, but I, I appreciate that. Thank you. We got we got a lot of good good guys, but yeah, I mean I've I'm excited. I'm excited to see what I can do and, and where I can go. But if you're putting me in the conversation with Grant, then I, I feel really good about that. And I feel yeah. like you're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're pumping my tires a little bit here. And, you know, that's why I love you. But <laughs> And maybe uh, I'm a little biased. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, that's what I'm, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see where I can take it. And like I said, it's just about finding those those more consistent moments, those more consistent seasons. And I think with the right – training environment and, and training structure, I think that I can get there. Yeah. When I was talking to Delaney about this in uh, the Netherlands, and she was talking about how basically, like, it looks like 95% of the beach volleyball teams this year had, like, bad seasons. Because, like, there weren't that many big opportunities for, like, the big dogs to shine, right? So, and you look at, especially, like, with the U.S., for example, you know, Sarah Hughes had to play in country quotas all the time. It has still hasn't really been able to find a set partner because some are sort of retired in the mm -hmm. middle of the Olympic race. And so all of the best partners were locked up for the Olympics. And so mm -hmm. she was kind of floating and struggled in country quotas. Um, like, like Kelly Clays and Sarah Sponsel, like unequivocally fantastic year. Ended on like kind of a tough note with the AVPs, didn't win any. Um, they still have World Tour Finals, but it was like April and Alex had a great year. Tri Bourne had a great year. It's like, oh, everyone else, it just seemed like they kind of struggled. And so I look at it because, like, you were just put in kind of a pressure cooker, like only three AVPs. FIVBs were either, it was like one star or four star, which made the one stars tougher. So mm -hmm. you ended up not getting the results you wanted. Like, when you look back on the year, like, how would you describe this one for you? Like, success? Yeah, that's what I think. I think that I would consider it a success. Um, but of course I'm still hungry for more. It was, I like you, like for all the reasons you said, it was an interesting year, but I yeah. think you have to look at it objectively, not against other years that you've had. I think right. that's kind of the best way to do it. And you just look at it f around the other teams that you competed against, you know, are in right. the same realm with kind of, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Because you didn't have eight, four stars to kind of rip off a bunch of wins you didn't have a bunch right. of avps you know the one stars were were more difficult so you're kind of looking at it like everybody i feel like lost points really this year yeah right like, like it's this like great recession <laughs> i mean when you when you take out everything between a one and a four star and you don't hold any five stars what like what do you think's gonna happen so it's more interesting right. to look at like 
okay, where are we ranked in the world now versus right. where are we ranked before? For us, we're ranked higher now than we were before, even though I went down in some points. Yeah. Didn't have any Norsecas. Those are kind of points buffers. Big time. Um, so for me, I just I tried not to focus on, do I have more points? Did I get right. more points this season? I tried to focus on, are we playing better than we were last season? And in my opinion, we, we were. So it was a success yeah. for me. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. It's so tough because, like, it. I mean, it. It's a comparative sport. Like, mm-hmm. you, you need to have more points to get into the tournaments you want. And but, like, you you also, if you're playing better volleyball, the points will come. Exactly. And so we'll see next year. Supposedly, we'll our boy uh, Will Hoey is uh, in a meeting right now with the FIVB Players Association. They're figuring out the new system. Um, so supposedly, it's three tiers next year. We don't know much more than that. Um, so we'll see if we can climb that ladder. <laughs> if we can climb the ladder, yeah. <laughs> I've heard some crazy stuff, so I don't know if yeah. what's true and what's not true. So I, I won't. Uh, yeah. I won't go there yet. But I have also heard that it's a three tier system, and it sounds interesting. I don't know. I think yeah. anything to kind of pump some excitement and and bring some life to the sport. I'm on board with. I mean, you and I have had some pretty fun conversations about oh, yeah. cool ideas and and yeah. things that we think would maybe work and what could be inspiring even for the AVP or world tour. So, um, yeah, I think we'll see. Hopefully this is a step in the right direction. Yeah. Do you know if, uh, is Canada going to be running like Van Open next year? If you had to like, if you were betting, man, <laughs> which, if, which I am, <laughs> <laughs> are you betting on a uh, Van Open 2022 to happen? It's a, Yes, for me. Just about how passionate I know the people that run the Van Open are about yeah. their tournament and just how incredible it is. I know it was absolutely heartbreaking for them this season to have to cancel it again. Yeah. The first year, there was not much really anybody could do about anything. You know, they had no chance. Yeah. This year, they, they played a lot of events out in BC, just weren't able to host their granddaddy of them all, their, their big one, yeah. uh, which is kind of like our are Manhattan in a way. Right. I mean, much smaller comparative, but, um, so I know that they pride themselves on being the best tournament in Canada and yeah. the people, the community, the, both the beach volleyball community and just the amount of, you know, random people that rock up and watch that event is, is insane. So yeah. I think that'll be up and happening and I'm hopeful. Yeah. Awesome. Cause it's getting a, a pretty good reputation in the U S too. Like that's like kind of a, a bucket lister for Americans to play now. Yeah, I think it, it should be. I mean, it's not that far, really, especially from your Seattle's, you know. Right. Um, and I think Madison and Riley coming yeah, down and they playing it, of... they did a great job of filming. And I think, to be fair to the people hosting too, they did a great job of hosting a great tournament right. that Riley and Madison could show off how great it yeah. is. So it was kind of a, a wicked thing that they were able to come down and, and really show off with their amazing uh, storytelling prowess. Yeah. That just to show how cool an event it is, and now I'm hopeful that we get a bunch of teams. I mean, we had a Brazilian legend, Harley, win. Yeah, and Luciana, right? Yeah, yeah, win it. So I mean, that's got to do some some pretty cool stuff for the tournament. So mm-hmm. every year they before COVID they were adding more money and a new kind of cool thing that right. they were doing to it. So I'm so excited to see. I know big shout out to my boy Sandy and Seymour. They just do an incredible job both announcing and yeah. making sure everything goes smoothly. I mean, there's a ton of people behind the scenes, but right. um, those guys are, are absolute legends. So Yeah. And I was talking to Devin May about it. Devin May, for the listeners, she's a Canadian national team player who I met at a Norseka that she won in La Paz. Um, but I don't think... Anybody has it tougher to be a professional beach volleyball player than of like kind of the major powerhouse countries than, than Canada because like Americans can complain and, and we do, <laughs> um, but we at least have the AVP and whether yeah. we have three events or eight and people will complain even if they only have eight, like we still have a domestic tour. So and if you, yeah, so if, if you, if you don't want to play international, yeah, you, you still have the domestic tour and if it's eight events, like you can hold a full-time job, but you guys, it's like you have to go travel and for North Americans, like we travel more than any other country in the world to get to Europe. Like here in the Bellows, be like, oh yeah, our flight was thirty three euro. It's like, oh my, <laughs> absolute, just, absolute crusher. Just take it back. Yeah, <laughs> don't say that. And so I give so much credit to Canadians 
for being a professional beach volleyball players because you have to travel so freaking much and you don't have a domestic tour to come home to except you have the Van Open, which is a pretty sweet event. Yeah, we got the Van Open. We, we got a couple okay ones in Quebec now as well okay. that are starting to come alive. So hopefully those continue to grow. And then we generally have one in Ontario that that's not bad, but nothing compares to the Van Open. I think the honest, honestly the hardest part for Canadians is you look at these Americans and, you know, even before your AVPs, yeah. you have your Atlantic cities, your New Orleans, Seaside, Seaside New yeah. Orleans, which are now called AVP. Next Golds. Next Golds. But when I was growing up, they were just all kind of one-off yeah. tournaments from each other. But that's the only reason I think that I got any good at beach volleyball, to be honest with you. Really? I was going down and playing all those tournaments as a 17, 18-year-old. Okay. Because we were just playing the same teams every single weekend. Right. Which, again, gets you better at volleyball, but it doesn't teach you the things you need to learn to be on the road, in my opinion. Yeah. You need to learn how to... We have no idea who these guys are, but they're good and they right. can ball. But who do we serve? Yeah. Why are we serving them? Yeah. Because their hitting world look good. <laughs> but, right. You know what I mean? Those are things, serious things when you're playing in a one star or two star that you have to you have to deal with. You might have never seen these teams before yeah. with technology and stuff. It's coming along, but you know, and the four stars all being on. But it's like we might only have one game on this team. We might yeah. have none. So it's like, how do we go about the decision-making process of what we want to do to them? And we get into we get into some routines because we play the same teams over and over again where it's like, yeah. this guy, you know it on the AVP, right. this guy does this a lot, does this a yeah. lot, right? So I think just the pure amount of really good players that are just still playing in America, even in those seasides and things yeah. like that, really help because what do you do if you're a 17, 18-year-old kid, you're not able to beat our three, four, five, six team in Canada to get on the Norseka tour. Right. Are you ready to spend a bunch of money to travel to Europe? Play one star qualities. To play one star qualities <laughs> when you're not ready? I don't right. particularly think that's a good way to set up for success. Yeah. So how do you get these matches? How do you learn right. different styles of volleyball even? Because for me personally, I learned a lot from just watching Bruno play Yeah. on, on TV, right? Nobody played like Bruno where I was from, right? Yeah. So if I didn't have that exposure, if I didn't see those things, like you go to Florida, a lot of guys, small, crafty, good mm -hmm. shooters, you know? You're at Lake City, there's just a bunch of dudes just hitting the piss out of the ball. Yeah. So you kind of got to see, I got to see all these different types of players and be like, okay, there's not just one mold of right. beach volleyball. There's a million different ways to play, big, small, Big, yeah. big, two smalls, right. two mediums, you know what I mean? In terms of size, fast offense, high off, you know what I mean? There's yeah. so many different things. And I think if you're kind of stuck in your little bubble, you maybe are not getting exposed to what the right yeah. situation is for, for yourself or your team. Yeah. And not only are you not getting exposed to it to try to figure out, like, to add wrinkles to your own offense and defense, but, like, you're also not learning how to stop it. How to stop it. So when you get on the world tour, you're like, I have never seen a team run a shoot set. Right. How do you stop that? I've never seen a guy not hit a ball ever, but still side out at a super <laughs> high percentage. Or, you know, I've never seen a guy that's just touching 12 feet and right. at attacking our baseline. Like, yeah. you know, those are all things that you have to learn how to deal with. And and I think that that's the hardest part. I personally think in Canada is how do we learn how to play against these different styles. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, like the... The college system in the U.S., I feel like it's just becoming this like international pipeline of talent development. And now for the guys, it's like, all right, well, now we have all these like little quote unquote minor league tournaments. There's probably about eight to ten a year now that you just and you'll see a lot of guys like they'll travel around and play all of them. And like they'll lose pretty early, but they'll go to the next one and they'll mm -hmm. lose maybe a little later. And then they go to the next one a little bit later. And you're like at the beginning of the year, you're like, oh, yeah, we'll never lose to these guys. And you're like, man, I'm playing these guys in the quarters. And then they're kind of good now. Yeah, 100%. And that's <laughs> you know? so exciting to see, right? And I think that's that's, and that's and where the, the American system is pretty lucky, right? And then all of a sudden, you yep. are getting, you're also getting tested against your top players because they're at the AVPs. Right. I can't remember the last time I played Saxon O'Gorman. Right. Just because, you know, they're out in the West Coast. They're traveling to four stars a lot. We don't right. necessarily have a lot of tournaments where we get the chance at them, right? Where we get to learn from them, play against them. Yeah. You know, lucky enough, we train a lot with Sachs, uh, sorry, uh, Schachter and 
Pedlo because they live in the same place that we do. But those are valuable lessons, even when you're, you know, losing to your Gibbs and and Krabs and Tries and Trevors, you know, you're just like, okay, yeah, that's what they did to us, you know, because the best teams also are the best at picking up your flaws, which then help you because you're like, well, I didn't even maybe know that I had that flaw, but every time I play them, this is what they do to me. So those are valuable lessons in themselves that we're maybe missing without our national tour, I, I, I believe anyways. Yeah. And so I, uh, I don't envy you guys, but I'm super impressed by every Canadian who like takes a shot and gets out there. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> and so, I mean, for the, like, I know that everyone, a lot of, so many people in America, like will always kind of complain like, oh, it's got to be bigger, bigger, bigger. But like, even in a down year, the U S is still putting on like one of the biggest beach volleyball years of any country in the world. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah, let's open that bad boy up. Yeah, you know, we'll I would sh- love to. We'll share our, our awesome van open, yeah. and then you share everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair trade. <laughs> Seems like a good trade, right? Yeah. Man, next year's going to be crazy. Like, all the new partnerships for the Olympics, like, it's going to be really interesting to see, like, what does Bally's do with the AVP? What does the tier system look like? It's, uh, it's going to be a wild couple of years coming up. I think it's an exciting time for the game. I think hopefully we can get some cool things i think even this college system that they have is it's it's pretty cool i thought i'd like to see you know what it would look like if the avp started having some some teams and some set spots yeah started going at it college style yeah i think just to get try and get some emotional attachment to some of these players would be a really good thing for the sport as well for sure so you know something like the las vegas whatever like taking that, on like, the la yeah pick your poison for name and you got crab on one side and the other crab on you know what i mean yeah. i think and then you're having a rooting interest in those teams i mean that's something i'd like to see them explore and let some canadians play in the league and let's, yeah i mean i i don't know i think there's so many cool things that can be done with the sport i think it just takes the right minds and the right money to be able to do it yeah Man, I would, me and Try talk about this all the time. I would freaking love to see like a Ryder Cup style college format, like the US's best five, Brazil's best five, Russia's best five, Germany, I think are probably the biggest countries that can bring in five legitimately world class teams and just have them like duel it out like a college tournament. I think that'd be freaking sick. I would love to, I would love to see that. Um, Yeah. That I think there's ex- exciting stuff on the horizon. Hopefully, we'll see where they where they take it. Yeah, we're just along for the ride. Filming a movie. <laughs> Filming a movie. Good guy Kenny over here. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny and my boy Dave. Oh man. <laughs> what a what a ride. What a ride. I'm along for it. Jakey, always a pleasure, <laughs> my brother. Good chat. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>